G'day guys, day two. We uh, we stayed last night at the Lion's Den. We ended up making it in at about um, eight o'clock last night. A little bit late. The, the crab track took a little bit longer on the on the tail end than we thought. Um, it, it eases off a fair bit though, so it's, it's it's really easy on the backside. So if you come uh, in the later half of the year. Tell you what, you got no dramas. I saw we, we did see a couple of guys on there with camper trailers and and things like that. So it's it's quite easy, and there is there is a few little uh, nice campsites in in along the way. Lots of lots of uh, creek crossings. We missed out on probably filming um, maybe a good six, I'd say, uh, crossings. But we've we've packed up this morning. We got into the line's then at about eight o'clock. Um, so we we're just shy of catching the kitchen being open. So it just closed as we got there. So we, we didn't get to have uh, didn't get to have a steak we were sort of looking forward to. But um, we ended up getting a pizza, quick and easy. Um, nice little campsite there. Well well worth pulling in, having a stop, having a cold beer, and get going. But we've packed up from there now. We've made it up. It's only about another um, 30 minutes or so up the road, up to um, Cooktown. From here, we're going to we're going to continue on, and hopefully tonight make our way to Cape Flattery. So we'll see you on the track. Well, that's that's pretty disappointing. I was just following uh, I was just following a fairly regular looking dirt road. It wasn't even casual. It was a little uh, little bypass 
track on the on the HEMA maps. And then as you can see behind me, it uh, the track deteriorated quite quickly. And we started heading down, just led us into this little two wheel bush track. I've just stopped to walk back up the track a little bit to see if I've missed a turn somewhere, but I haven't, uh, I can't see anywhere that I've missed the turn. And it says, according to the map that we're on the track, but um, anyway, it's pretty much led me to a, a dead end down here. But there is a beautiful river, to be honest, down here. It'll be, I'll give you a look. It'd be full of crocodiles, so you probably wouldn't swim, but it might be worth flicking a lure. But now we're... Now that we're um, got a backtrack, it's only supposed to be a little 19 kilometer detour, but now we've got a backtrack and get back on, link back up where we are going from before. So, hey mate, getting a bit dusty. All right, well, we'll, uh, we'll do that again. Start getting stuck where we go. Okay, so this is serious. This is serious. Right okay, guys, this is serious. So we've got, we've just come through a uh, little bit of a crossing here and she's starting to get a bit deep and I've edged on about another 50 metres up the track so I think it's time to get the tyres down. I've got a little something that makes life a lot easier. A couple of Storm tyre deflators. If you haven't used these before, you set them to the pressure that you want your tyres to be. I've got mine set to 18 PSI and it's as easy as save time take the cup off screw them on there we go we we'll just go around and do that to all the tires by the time you get back you're at pressure but we're getting to the um we're getting to the beach track now I guess it's another, I think, about 10 k's, just judging off that map coming in. So, I've never been out here, and I, it's supposed to be stop there. But, we'll give you guys a look on how it goes.
Here we are guys, we've made it down to the beach. You might not be able to, uh, the wind might be smashing this, I don't know, it's blowing a gale here on the, um, on the east side. The track down, I'll give you a look at this, the track down in here. That's going to be a mission coming, uh, coming back up, so I'm looking forward to doing that. But we're down here. The track in was actually really cool. It's well worth, uh, well worth coming down. It's fairly thick. A lot of uh, deep water crossings and things like that, so it's well worth the drive. But for now, we've got to do about another 30 k's up the beach to get um, onto the other side to it's called it's Connie's something I'll, I'll think of it later I'll, I'll tell you when we get to the other side but uh, either way guys have a go at this how can it get any better So we got down to the end of the um, end of the beach and follow on the HEMA maps. And the track on the map isn't actually the track you need to exit the beach to get across to the other side. To uh, Connie's Beach is the um, is is the beach I was looking for. So if you get all the way to the end here, where the ships are loading. The, uh, the Hema maps get you to turn off up there. Hot tip, that's not it. Come back uh, rough enough. I'm, I'm standing pretty much at the, uh, at the actual entrance now. And run that up. Run that up and that'll take you to the crossing of the conveyor belt. They've got a big, um, you can see it up there. There's a big conveyor belt that runs and feeds the sand into the ships. So the significance of Cape Flattery is this is supposed to be the purest uh, white silica sand in the world. So um, they export the stuff. So they got a big conveyor there and you've got to get around that somehow. Or I'll show you how you get past it, I should say. Hang on, we'll, go, we'll duck up this track and uh, we'll give you a look.
holly dolly. So that's what we got to, uh, like I was saying at the other end, when you come through, there's a tunnel at the other side, you got to cross under this uh, conveyor belt there. So you can see it's, you got 2.4 meters wide, 2.4 high, so. The antenna was literally. It's about to touch. Yeah. Well, there you go. I was a little bit worried about it, but then I thought, I'll hear it if it touches. All right, we're almost there. So this should be the last little stretch and we are on a west facing beach with not blowing sand up in our faces. So come on, let's do it. Guys, have a look at this. We have arrived. And what a prime campsite. The wind's down. We've got shade. We've got swings. And we are literally on the beach. You, you can't get better than this. And... So we just went for a drive up the uh, sort of round of the beach there and there's one other car. One other car, one other, one other group. I think they're out in a, a tinny out here fishing now. So we've got this entire place to ourselves. We, um, we're gonna be here, spend a couple of nights here. Uh, once we get set up, I'll give you a look at that. And we're just gonna kick back and relax. We've we've had a couple of couple of short days in the car, so nothing too strenuous for the kids. But guys, it, there's only one thing to do now, and that's that's to crack a beer and just relax.
just give you a quick look at uh, at the setup but we've got we sort of cook off the back there um, we've got the, the awning all set up and pegged down the the kids the chairs laid out I mean the the sun's coming down now so it's it's looking good the swags set up so something new we're trying on this trip is two double swags it's not something we normally do we uh, we generally were running a, an Oz tent or if I was going on my own I'd use a single swag but um, we've we've got a king swag there we've got a dachi swag here I already know which one out of the two is far superior but um, that's what we're trolling now got the missus and I in that and the, the two kids in another one um, definitely be getting another dachi I'll tell you that much uh, so the dog's bed down there bin bag couple of drinks couple of drinks going on sunset getting ready getting ready to watch the uh, the sun come down and I'll spin you around the kids down there have a go at it have a go at it absolutely beautiful guys Connie's Beach on Cape Flattery if if you've never been this is definitely uh, this is definitely a place you need to come anyway I'm gonna have uh, I'm gonna have myself a few beers a few more beers and cook something up for tonight so I'll probably see you then to grab garlic and the trivet. 